Hello everyone and welcome to the second episode of From the Baseline. In this episode we talk to Paige Alter who's back from the US and now in Auckland and Luke Taplin who's still based up in New York. But first I thought I'd just give you a little bit of the feedback from my first show. The first person said, great job editing Emma. Andrew, you talk too much. Secondly, Andrew, you have a face for radio and a voice for the newspaper. Now, I could get upset about this and say, hey, it's my show, I can do what I like. However, I've decided to be the bigger person and take this feedback on board. So from here on in, you'll be seeing less of me and the shows will be a little bit shorter. So anyway, let's get going. Born in Auckland, New Zealand. Second daughter and coached by North Coast super coach Deanne Alter. Educated at Westlake Girls on the North Shore and currently studying at Sacramento State, USA. Three times North Coast singles and doubles champion and still reigning champion, the beautiful Paige Alter. Hey guys, we've got a familiar face with us today. Paige Alter is back in town. Um, having to cut short her first year at, at college in the US. So Paige, um, just run us through initially how you had to rush home. So basically I decided maybe the 17th of March and it was it late at night at 11 p.m. and I decided to come home and I had to pack up my entire room because I was leaving the next day in the morning. So I went to bed at 4 a.m. and I just turned my whole dorm upside down. And yeah, I got out of there and I got dropped off by my Kiwi friend Josh at San Fran Airport. And so were things, are things quite bad where you were? Because you're near, you're near San Francisco, eh? Yeah, so California is like one of the worst states, but it wasn't too bad in Northern California, so we were fine. But um, yeah, I didn't really see too much, but everyone was leaving and it was eventually ghost town. So we just left, yeah. But it so wasn't the whole, too the whole tennis team yeah. disbanded, did they, pretty much? Yeah, no, because um, a lot... A lot of the people were from Europe and they had like days, hours to get out of there because everything was getting locked down. So the next day everyone left and so I just decided to leave as well. Yeah, okay. Oh, a bit of a sad end. So does that mean the end of the tennis season for you or you don't know? Yeah, so our conference was actually one of the last ones to cancel. Like Lauren's and everyone else was pretty early, but we were supposed to be flying out the next day to Arizona and we cancelled last minute because we'd probably get there and they would have cancelled it and there's no point in playing if like the conference matches are happening. So yeah, it was really last minute. Yeah. And how have you enjoyed your first few months uh, in America? Um, I had a rough start, not going to lie. I mean, I wasn't in shape at all. I was really unfit and it was like 40 degrees when I got there. So I was, it was rough and I had a lot of ups and downs, but now I'm like, I'm obviously like adjusted and I'm way fitter, but it's really tough and practice every day. And I don't know, everyone's really good and stuff, but it's been good for me. Yeah. And how's your tennis been going? I mean, I'd say I'm fitter. I've improved, but I mean, we weren't that um, fit this semester. It's just like matches and stuff, but the fall was intense, like a lot of conditioning and sprints and around the track and mile runs. So it was super tough. but overall like it's good's good great great oh well it's um good to see you around page unfortunately no, no one can actually see you but um, <laughs> i'm sure i'm sure mum is is most grateful to to have you around um i hear the internet's a bit dodgy at home but um and so you yeah. still doing your school work as well yeah it's still online this week i'm actually on spring spring break which is really good but yeah, it's not, not quite it's as good as it, not, not quite as good as it would have been if you had been in America. I'm sure. Yeah, no, it's hard to keep up with your online lectures, so I actually am quite behind. So I probably should get onto that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, great! Thanks uh, for help coming on, and uh, all the best. And ha you don't know how long you'll be here for, I suppose. I have no idea. I actually um, could be coaching in Malibu at this Nike camp with Josh, the Kiwi guy. Um, but who knows if that's even going to happen in June, so we just have to wait and see. Otherwise, yeah, I don't know what's okay. happening. Cheers, Paige. We'll see you around. Thank you. Bye. Right, I said yesterday there would be no more on the couch. However, I've had a number of questions come through, and I thought this was the most appropriate place to answer them. 
sort of like the old days of Beauty and the Beast, just with no beauties. So the first question I've got is from an anonymous person is, why can't I continue to play tennis with my ball machine? Well, there's a few reasons. Firstly, we're here for a long time, not a good time. And it's not fair that you have fun while we don't. Secondly, we can't guarantee that you won't use your hands going in the, in the gate and potentially pass on the virus. And thirdly, Jacinda said you can't. We don't want to upset Jacinda. Anyway, actually, Bevan, I know why you wanted to play tennis while the break was on, because I know you're facing Dean in the semi-final of the North Coast Restricted World Championship singles. And you were thinking you could practice while he couldn't. Bad luck. Anyway, let's get on with the show. So now, live from New York, well, at least it was live when I recorded it, Luke Tapley. Okay, guys, we've got Luke Taplin here uh, from New York. Luke is uh, in his final year of his US college scholarship, uh, been playing tennis over there as well. And um, he's also an ex uh, Northcote member. And his, obviously, uh, you might recognize the name Taplin. His father, Mark, is a life member of Northcote, and mother, Catherine, and brother, Josh, also uh, members at Northcote. So, uh, Luke, nice to see you. Uh, how are things uh, in the big city? Yeah, good to see you too. Uh, things are pretty crazy at the moment. Um, yeah, we've been on kind of quarantine. Well, I've been on kind of official quarantine for the last two weeks. Um, uh, my college closed down about two weeks ago. They kicked off all the all the dorm residents um, that could could leave. So all the all the um, the locals kind of went home. Uh, a lot of the internationals left. Um, and the, the college kind of said that we could finish our studies from home um, across kind of across the country and obviously across the globe um, through kind of Google Hangouts, Zoom classes. Um, so it's been a real uh, it's been a real learning experience trying to uh, adapt to online classes. It's definitely something that the colleges struggle with, and I, I'm hearing that other colleges are struggling with that. But it's just something we have to adapt to. So yeah. And uh, ten so tennis is all finished for you now, college-wise then? Well, yeah, actually, so uh, we got the news when we were down in Florida. We were actually heading to a match against Rollins College. Um, on our way there, we got the phone call from our coach saying that Rollins had just, just before we got there, had cancelled the rest of their season. So um, our match with them was going to be their last match. We played out the match. We ended up losing 4-3 or 5-2, which was a good uh, good result for us because they were a, a very good school. Um, and then we got the call from our coach saying that they'd cancelled all the rest of the sprint sports and all the NCAA sports. And immediately half of the team, uh, my team was kind of, they were distraught because a lot, obviously a lot of the guys love tennis uh, and they lost a season. Um, so what the NCAA, I think, have done is they've restored eligibility for us so we can actually come back and play next year. Um, so potentially for those who want to come back, for seniors like myself, if I did a master's or something for my school, I could come back and I would still get scholarship and I could play for one more season. So it's possible I will come back. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it yet. Um, but it's good that the NCAA have done that because a lot of people really, it would have been really terrible if they missed out on the season. Yeah, right. Um, and so what's your sort of plans going forward from here? Are you sort of stuck in, in New York now or, or is that sort of you know, choice? Uh, by choice, uh, at the moment, um, I'm waiting on a, a work visa application, um, what's called an OPT, which lets me work in the country uh, for a year after I graduate. Uh, so I'm waiting on that um, to go through. And once... Once that goes through, I can start working in the country. And my plan is to kind of work for the year and see how I like it. I'll live around here. I'm looking at uh, bunking up with a few of my mates um, in, a, in a flat nearby. So we're looking at houses now, trying to get, get in with realtors that can still see us. And that's obviously a challenge with all the lockdowns going on. So mm. we're just trying to navigate through that. And then hopefully 
I can try and find something. Hopefully, someone's hiring after all this craziness, and I can uh, I can get working. So yeah. And what, so, what degree of lockdown have you got at the moment? I mean, obviously, we we couldn't even consider moving into a new flat here at the moment, but you can do that. Well, that's the thing. It's a bit it's a bit strange because here, what they've done, like, you turn on the news and you got you got the federal government, you got Trump and the president and all, all his advisors saying one thing, but because it's like separated that there's federal and there's also state governments, we listen, we have to listen to more of what the governor Cuomo is saying um, and what his guidelines are. The federal guidelines don't really impact us. So what Cuomo has pretty much said, it's what he's called a shelter in place or, so it's, it's sort of similar to back home um, where you're only meant to go out for, uh, for health reasons, pharmacy and, and, and food. But I was just saying to um, Deanne and Paige before that people are going out for, they're just going out. Like there's still lots of people on the roads. People aren't taking it as seriously as what it sounds like people are back home. Um, people are still going and getting takeout. There's lines for Taco Bell and Chick-fil-A. And that we went, we were driving past a Starbucks today and the line was just, the drive through line was forever. And finally, um, we've got a few uh, young kids watching this um, and who have got dreams maybe of uh, going to college in America themselves. What, how would you rate the experience of going over there? Oh, 10 out of 10, 100%. we we'll would do it again. Wish more people did it. Um, it does look like I see every, I follow a couple of pages of people back home that work in agencies and send kids over, not just tennis, but all, all sports. I, any any sport you can pretty much do here now. Uh, rugby is start, starting to get pretty big, but um, I've I've really enjoyed my my experience here. Um, I've I've elected to stay the whole year. Each year I've been here, so I, I'm I'm only back home for that brief Christmas period. Um, the the summers, which I know a lot of people go home, the the US summer, which is between May and September. I I've chosen to stay and work. Um, so that's been also a great experience because. It's gotten me out of the college bubble, which a lot of people can find themselves in, especially if they live on campus. It's not real life. You're not living in another country, really. Like you're, you're on your college campus. Everything's pretty enclosed. Um, but working here and living in, and I worked in the Hamptons out in Long Island as a tennis pro, and that was, that was really great. I've met some awesome people, uh, made some lifelong relationships, and just had a, had a really good time. So it's been, it's been really good. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, Luke, uh, thanks for your time today. Uh, much appreciated. And um, all the best for uh, life under Trump. Um, cool. Sure, yeah, cheers. Andrew. I'm sure it will be interesting, <laughs> if nothing else. Eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely interesting. Yeah, and, uh, and you too. Stay safe. I hope everyone else uh, back home is doing well. Okay, thanks, Lab. Well, thanks for watching today's episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, we'll do, be doing a special show um, for kids at some stage, so we're just getting that stuff ready. And so we'll have some activities for kids to do over this period. Before I finish, I just want to give a shout out to Ross Pett from Lanta Building. He's been a big supporter of the club in the last year. He helped uh, build the shelter outside Court 6. And he also sponsored all the shirts for the kids in our beginners program. So thanks for your support, Ross. Okay, goodbye and we'll see you next time on From the Baseline.